welcome back to Lex Reads. So in today's video, this is super random. And when I tell you super random, super random, because I'm thinking about maybe doing another read a book in one day. I want to read at least one more book before the month is going to end. And this is going to be perfect because this book is very small. But the reason why it is super random, quick little story. So went to the gym, went to some other stores. Of course, I was right near a Barnes and Noble. And I was going to see if they had the another Virginia D. Berry and Donna Grant book. You guys know on my last read a book in one day, I read Better Than I Know Myself and was raving over it. So I went to see if they had like another book of theirs. And of course, I was going to get it. They didn't have it. But while I was there, I was looking through the shelves. And when I picked up the book, I looked at the cover and the woman on the cover. And I said, oh my goodness, I have to get it. I still have it in my bag. So the woman is Alice Dunbar Nelson. And it's a collection of some short stories. It's called The Goodness of the Saint. Is it Rock Raku? I know I'm probably has butchered that. Now I was looking at the year this came out. This came out in 2022, this edition, but this collection of short stories was written in the 1800s. It was written, it says 18. 99. Now I know a tiny bit about Alice uh, Dunbar Nelson because she is kind of known, well not kind of, she's known during the Harlem Renaissance and then she was the wife of Paul Lawrence Dunbar and Paul Lawrence Dunbar is my favorite poet of all times. I'm not into poetry but he is my number one I would have to say and probably my second is my Angelou. His poem, A Negro Love Song, oh, Oh my goodness. And if you guys have listened to my Angelou recite it, amazing. She is the epitome of, you know, unknown. It was mainly due because of clearly she's a black woman during the, you know, 18, 1900s. And then her husband was well, well, well known. I think a lot of people, when you do think about Paul Lawrence Dunbar, you know, <sighs> he was like huge just think about some people just think about like a popular person in you know pop culture or something like that he was like on that level okay so you can imagine you have a husband of that caliber so of course you're going to get over overshadowed then you're black you go get overshadowed and then you're a woman you're those, like three strikes against you but we are going to be diving into this book from the delights of mighty grots on bourbon street to the quiet bayous where lovers meet and to fish fries on the shore of mississippi sound in these intimate stories featuring unforgettable characters dunbar nelson provides a unique window into the struggles of joys of everyday creole louisianans this edition also features a selection of short a selection of stories from Dunbar Nelson's first collection, Violets and Other Tales. We are going to be learning together about Alice Dunbar Nelson because again, don't know a lot about her. After a brief time teaching elementary school, she began her pursuit of a literary career. Her first collection of short stories and poetry, Violets and Other Tales, was published in 1895. It's regarded as the first known work of its kind by a black woman. She would continue to publish poetry and short stories throughout her life, writing about racism and oppression, and challenging the conventions of gender and marriage. Hello. Bunny. Yeah. What was that street in Louisiana you said where, like, when you guys crossed the railroad tracks, like, the radio went out or something? Oh, we was on Bayou Rapids. Bayou Rapids. Okay, the reason why I'm asking because I'm reading this book and it's in New Orleans and it's giving me, like, oh. that vibe. Oh, okay. So, like, okay, didn't, wasn't it, like, a house, too, somewhere that y'all said, like, y'all never could go to because it was, like, kind of, like, evil? I remember you telling me something. Okay, I do remember you got it was obviously all you guys were driving in the car and you said the radio went out, right? Or something like that. Yeah, we were driving up by your rapids. And we passed by that house that land. Mm-hmm. And then we turned around and went back to Alexander. Yeah, that's what we did. We turned around and went back to Y'all didn't say nothing, y'all just because y'all knew like don't what it wasn't good to go over there or yeah the lady walked that lane that night they always said that 
That's what it was. Okay. So wait, she walked the lane at night? Yeah. And that's why it was haunted. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why I'm equating like a, a big white house or something. I remember you saying something about. Oh, okay. Okay. That was the house. Okay, clearly that lady was dead, but she walked. Yeah, yeah, she walked. And that's. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where y'all were, where she used to walk, and that's when the radio went out. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yes, it's in New Orleans. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff went on in New Orleans. Yeah, and clearly, I know. Obviously, you know, y'all town was little. You know, a little town but still it's louisiana like y'all still you know yeah because that's just what louisiana is that like spooky kind of yeah <laughs> yeah okay i just want to uh ask you about that story how are you feeling that relationship really in many ways defines her life, I think, because as I mentioned earlier, she begins to document her life pretty much when he sends her that first letter. And she intentionally keeps his name Dunbar because she understands that being connected to someone that was seen really as you know, this, this, um, sometimes I, I try to help students by thinking about who is, is the man in, uh, in popular culture to understand, to help them to understand right. that Paul Lawrence Dunbar had this weight in society that wasn't just within black society at all. I mean, he was highly admired by, right. uh, white people as well. And so she marries this man after she has been sexually abused by him. And, you know, it's, it's just an abusive relationship. And so she finally leaves him and it's not clear as to why. But um, and even when he dies, she's not in conversation with him. OK, you guys, so real quick, the clip that you're going to see next um, I had already finished the book, but I forgot to include, which is so crazy. I forgot to, but I forgot to talk about stories that I liked in this collection. So I did finish it in one day, but I wanted to run down the stories that I liked. So altogether, there were 20 stories, but right off the bat, she hits you hard, okay? Mainly all these stories are set in Louisiana and New Orleans. You have one that's maybe set, I believe, in Mississippi but it's only one but that's the main location is New Orleans and in New Orleans you guys know that it's a city that is has a lot of oh lord like mediums voodoo spooky type of thing uh, she embodies some of that and not a lot of her stories maybe one in particular but this collection it gives me Ease by You. Have you guys seen Ease by You, the movie with um, Lynn Whitfield, Megan Good, uh, Journey Smollett? Love that movie, okay? But you know, that movie, it's clearly, um, you have clearly some things went down when the mother went to that medium that was played by Diane Carroll, and girl, some stuff went on, okay, that caused. A lot of heartache okay and when I was reading the goodness of Saint Rock I believe that's how you say it uh, which is the title of the book I thought about that because she, she goes to a medium and he and, her, and she tells um, her you know get a couple of things to make him basically want you <laughs> so yeah one that I think was really shocking to me was Tony's wife and I think the reason why is we know that 
Paul Lawrence Dunbar and Alice, their relationship was very volatile, and he did some things to her that he had no business doing, okay? And they said one time, the last time she left, he almost beat, like, he almost killed her, they said. They said he beat her almost to death, and that's when she said, okay, I gotta leave. And it was because he um, had tuberculosis, and the doctor told him in order for him to kind of alleviate the pain or cure it is to drink whiskey and he did that but he became an alcoholic and he became volatile but in this story Tony's wife the main character um, it's a Jewish woman she is a sweet woman they own a store Tony is Italian and he can't stand this woman and i think they say her name one time which is mary he hated her in a roaring fashion as a healthy beefy boy hates a sick cat and torments it to, and torments it to madness when she displeased him he beat her and knocked her frail form on the floor the children could tell when this had happened her eyes would be red and there would be blue marks all over her face and neck poor mrs tony they would say and nestle close to her and then she tells him, you know, since you have gout and you can't walk, you know, you can't do anything, how about you, we get a priest to like, you know, pray for you and all that. This man, you think I'm going to give you a chance to grab my money? Let me die and go to hell in peace. Girl. But there's a twist because at the end, it's like, oh man, she really got God, okay? That story kind of gave me a J. California Cooper vibe, how, you know, you think you know where it's going and then she twists and turns it and you as a reader, you're like, oh, that is so messed up. Or, you know what I mean? It gave me that feeling. Um, but when I was reading that, I said, you know what? I wonder was that inspiration look because he did beat her. And the last story that I also liked was um, Sister Josepha. She was a nun and she realized it was, um, she realized, you know what? I don't want to be a nun anymore because I want to be able to look, have a man. Okay. They were at church and a young man started looking at her and smiling and she didn't know what to do. And she felt some type of way, started feeling butterflies and stuff like that. She like, you know what? I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to figure out how to bust out of this convent and, yeah, I really did like that because I like the way that, you know, the other nuns, they were like, you know, you chose to be a nun and you didn't know that you weren't going to be with any man, you know, basically. And she just cannot get down with that. She realized, oh, Lord, I have made a mistake. Okay. Um, I like the way that she wrote that character. And then the last one that got me, it kind of had, well, not kind of, it did have that voodoo type of, um aspect was the carnival jangle and that was like only three pages and there is a um what do you call it a video on youtube of like i think two guys they had read the story and they broke it down and i glad that i found that because i didn't real because i wanted to confirm what happened towards the end but you have a young girl i think it's during mardi gras she gets lured in by I guess some people that practice that stuff and some things happen and it does not end well but I was trying to figure out when I was re but when I was reading it towards the end I said I know that's not what happened wait and I read it again and I was like mm, let me at least see if there is a critical analysis or something and I stumbled on that video and it confirmed they confirmed it okay so yeah that one was a little spooky because when you realize what happened it's like oh gosh that's just horrible but overall this collection like i said in the preview like i said in the next clip um is hands down five stars so glad that i stumbled up on this because not only is it classic literature but it's classic literature by a black woman again i know for me when i do think about the 1900s before i always thought about white uh, white men and white women you know writing or a lot of times some of the books that were by blacks they're mainly like slave narratives she is from the Harlem Renaissance y'all know that is my era but yeah 
just finished it and really enjoyed it. Alice Dunbar Nelson for years was only remembered for being the wife of Paul Lawrence Dunbar, who was the most famous black poet of the late 19th century. The interesting part about that is that Alice Dunbar Nelson herself, her own sort of contributions to, to um, education and activism and literature um, outpaced that of her late husband's. I love reading stories like in the South, especially especially in Louisiana, because like I told you guys, you know, my family's background on both sides is from Louisiana. And I've heard so many of those stories, especially from, you know, um, my aunt and my grandmother. You know, I had a whole host of aunts. So, and I would listen to some of them stories, you know, growing up in the South and girl clearly like she was saying that <laughs> that lady in that house that lady walked in that lane and clearly the lady was dead but you know girl but i think that was one reason why this collection did intrigue me because it is set in new orleans also too this is set this is during the 19th century and you guys know i've been on my classic kick of reading books during that time and she's in it she is in that realm i love the fact that i just came across this collection because those books that i was talking to you guys about the uh my what is it classic literature like not boring or something i think it was titled something like that i'll put it down below but some of those authors they're well known you know like we know a dickinson we know a, uh edith wharton who else uh george uh elliott you know, we don't really hear about Ellis Dunbar Nelson. And as you guys saw in the clips that I included, like, you know, she does get overshadowed because of who her husband was. And he was like top back in the day. And then also too, I'm gonna put down below, you can listen to her short stories. They have some on YouTube, which is very cool. So like Tony's Wife, you can listen to that one. Um, what was another one? I'll put the other ones that you can listen to and they're only like 15 minutes, nine minutes, because again, her short stories are, they're very short, but they hit you with a punch. I do know that there is a collection of her, um, uh, diary entries that you can get that was published in the 80s I believe and that's how we learned about her sexuality because she you know talks about some of her little rendezvous with you know some women that she was with okay and men um and yeah um, they said a lot of things are in that I think I'm going to get because I am intrigued by her because just doing a little research that I did do she had some you know woes in her life like we all do but even with her being um you know biracial she said that like the black world didn't accept her nor did the white world accept her so growing up it was you know she was kind of like in limbo and they did say sometimes she would um pass to go to like shops and you know movie theaters and things like that and she could pass if people didn't know her they said and then clearly she moved from Louisiana and never you know went back but um and then you know she met paul and girl <laughs> and then you know she got married three times and one marriage was extremely volatile and all of that um i you know what when i learned that he was like that it, it kind of altered my love for him even though he will always be like my favorite poet of all times i just love paul on sunburn and poetry is not Poetry is not my ministry, okay? It's not. It's nothing that I gravitate towards. I don't even think I've read a whole poetry book. I have not read a whole poetry book. I should do that. If you, you know what, I need to do that. If you guys know sidebar, if you guys know any good poetry books, please tell me. Yeah, when I learned that girl, he was beating her and sexually assaulting her. I was like, my goodness. And yeah, he had a little hard life. He had a little hard life. And then they also said, um, I'll put that interview down below too, where, you know, because she was very light skinned, he was dark skinned, that colorism also played a um, role in their relationship because, you know, clearly they treat you differently when your skin is very, very dark, even within, you know, our culture. When I was listening to the interview about Paul, I said, you know what? Um, 
I didn't even think about that, how that would be kind of a conflict in their relationship, but it was. And then also too, they said she, he knew that she was, you know, had some little affairs, some lesbian affairs, and he went down with that, but yeah. But yeah, guys, again, I just want to tell you, please pick this up. This is a five star for me. We only have two collections of hers and a couple of poets and a couple of poems and a play, I believe. So she doesn't, we really think about it. She doesn't have a lot of work, but her work speaks so much value that it's almost like you don't even, she doesn't even have to have, you know, several collections because her work is heavy and it's heavy in a good way such a good way but yeah guys that is it when it comes to reading this book in one day yeah and i'll be back with more black books bye